Hey friends, it's Quenby, the Grateful Queen here on YouTube. Happy Friday. Welcome to another Live at Five. Every Friday on the channel, I do a reseller community night um, at 5 p.m. Pacific time on the channel. And it's an opportunity for resellers to come together and talk about all things reselling online. We like to share tips and tricks for selling online. I've been reselling on eBay for about 10 years and I've been on Poshmark a couple of years. And I mostly sell fashion. I sell clothing and shoes and purses and jewelry and all that kind of stuff. But you will find in our live chat that there are resellers who sell anything and everything and on all different sorts of platforms. So I'm on Poshmark and eBay, but you'll find people in the chat who also sell on Macari, Depop, Etsy. There are so many places that you can sell. And so if you have any questions at all about reselling online, I encourage you to dive into the chat and share your questions. Um, and there'll be somebody there to help you and answer it. We want to welcome you in. I see friends starting to show up in the chat. Happy Friday. I'm so happy to see you. It's um, Friday, January 15th. I'm coming to you from Northern California. And the sun was actually out today. It was probably, what, like 60 degrees. Just gorgeous. So I did all my shoe cleaning. I got a thread up rescue box. That's one of my favorite ways to get inventory for my reselling business. And I'm sometimes a little bit slow with the shoes. Let me know in the chat, do you sell shoes? Do you like selling shoes? And how do you do with the whole process? Let's start right off with that. Also, if you're in the chat, be sure to introduce yourself. Um, let people know what your real name is, not just your username, and um, maybe where you live, where you're selling, what kind of stuff you're selling, and how is reselling going for you right now? Give us kind of a highlights, kind of what's happening in your world of reselling. So today for me, the sun actually came out. So I was like, hmm, okay, you have to do those shoes. So I pulled out like, I got 15 pairs of shoes for $90 and a thread up rescue box. Has anyone got that box and what's your experience with it? And um, I was out there cleaning shoes today. And some of you have commented to me that you love doing it. Some of you don't. Where do you where do you stand on that? Let me say hi to some friends in the chat and then make sure if you're in the chat that you give us a check in. Let us know what's going on with you so we can get this conversation going. And if you're watching the replay, make sure to leave a comment and let us know, hey, I watched the replay. This is who I am. This is what I sell. And ask any questions. We, we are here to encourage you primarily. As resellers, we're here to help you grow. We want to know what your goals are, what your vision is for yourself and your business. And um, we want to encourage you and support you and build you up however we can. Oh, Lisette got the number one spot tonight. I bet Holly at Hunter Ryan is a little bit like, what's up? Hey, Lisette, happy Friday. Beautiful people. Hope you all had a marvelous week. I don't even remember this week. It's Friday and it went by so fast. I think it was pretty good. <laughs> Holly, there she is. And she said, hey, Lisette, you stole my spot. No driving tonight, I hope. That's some, there's some inside jokes, friends, because as you will learn pretty quickly, the same bunch of us show up every Friday. We're very dedicated to showing up here and getting to know each other and helping each other in our reselling businesses. So uh, sometimes there'll be a lot of comments from weeks before. Get in on it. It's fun. Deborah Anderson is here. Hi, Lisette. I just got the reminder and I thought I'd pull up YouTube before I forget. How's your week? So we get some chatting going on between friends. I see all sorts of good stuff. I'm going to go back to that because um, I want to say hi. Oh, we got Rescue and Resell, my favorite new reselling couple. And she's talking to Holly saying that Blue Box deal just popped up on my Instagram feed earlier. So it sounds like they're talking about the Goodwill Blue Box. I can tell you a lot about that if you have questions. Did anyone get a Goodwill Blue Box? And anyone want to educate people in the chat about it? Okay, we have got James is here, my friend James at the Antique Boutique. Thank you so much for helping moderate each week. I appreciate you. I got mine last year at B&H Fur, $200. They're the best. What are they talking about? I got to get up there now. I'm missing stuff. Oh, gosh. There's so much good stuff. Okay. Resale Royalty is with us. Hello, reselling rock stars. How's your week been? And we've got Heidi from Restyle Secrets. So happy to see you, Heidi. 
Heidi's always got some good things to talk with us about. So let's see what she has to say. And Barbara Babash is here. Hi, all. Working on listing 50 items tonight. I need about 15 more. Barbara, give us some tips. How the heck do you list 50 items in one night? Like, are you talking about from scratch or have you already built them? Or how does a person list 50 items in one night? I try to do five or 10 a day, five to seven days a week. Sarah Coleman is here. Hi, Quimby. Yay. It's Friday and I get to see Sarah Coleman, which makes me quite happy. Zoe Chad is with us. The chat just flipped on by, but I saw my friend Zoe Chat, and I don't want to miss anyone. Foxy Roxy's here. How's it going, Roxy? How's the eBay, the eBay stuff going? Birdie Looks is here. That's my friend Nicole. Happy Friday, everyone. Margaret's Market. I love that double M. Hello, everyone. I have a date night with Vendu. <laughs> I have a date night with Vendu tonight. Cross listing while I list. Listen, that is the best thing ever. If anyone doesn't know, Vendu is a cross posting software that you can use to cross post your items to different platforms. I use Vendu. I have a discount link in my description for like 20 or 25% off. Check it out. Cross listing has changed the game of reselling. If you have any questions or comments about that, pop it into the chat. Leslie, hey, Quemby and friends. Happy Friday. I love my girl, Leslie. She had a great, God, she had some great, how many times were you live this week on YouTube, Leslie? Definitely go check out her channel. I was over on her channel, I feel like at least two or three times this week for Livey Lives. Zoe chat. There she is. I'm having a bad Jomar work week. Uh-oh. Let us know in the chat. You guys know I'm a huge Jomar fan. I'm also an affiliate, but I give very honest reviews about my experience. Um, I got a Jomar box. I put half of it up um, on my channel. If you want to check out a Jomar wholesale box, that's one of the great ways that I get inventory online for my reselling business, but they're not perfect. Nobody is. So let us know how we can support you. Tell us what's going on. Donna is here. Hi, this is Donna from PA. How's it going, Donna? What's it like in PA right now? Gino Spines is here. What's up, Gino? I saw you pop in last week. Why don't you stay with us a little while this time so we can get to know you. Tell people about yourself. Um, we got Michelle here. Hey, all. Michelle in cold South Texas here. Need a shock collar to keep me from buying more inventory <laughs> until I list some. Oh, Michelle, I totally feel you. Let us know in the chat. Is that any issue for you? Let me just say it's a downfall for many resellers. Not all, but many resellers really, really enjoy the thrill of the hunt, the thrifting, the online shopping, but sitting your butt down and building your listings and getting stuff listed can be a challenge. So let us know where you're at with that. My friend Lindsay's here. Lindsay's Poshloff. So great to see you. And Michelle from Courageously Thriving. Hey, friends. Happy Friday. Friday. I hope you're at home right now. Every time I hear Happy Friday, what I hear because of our show is Happy Friday. And I can't hear Happy Friday without my shoulders doing this. For some reason, I blame Heidi. <laughs> okay, lots of great comments. Oh, good. Terry made it. Evolving Always Productions. Hello, everyone. My name is Terry. I am at Evolving Always on all major platforms. I sell more so on Poshmark, but I also sell on eBay, Etsy, and Macari. Hello, Quimby. I love selling shoes. Oh, my gosh. I need some of that love. I have a love-hate relationship with shoes. I love the profits from shoes. I love shoes. Like, personally, I like really good quality shoes. I'm a little bit of a shoe snob for myself personally. Um, I love to buy the shoes. What I don't like is them sitting in a box while I wait for me to clean them. I need to get better at that. And I am because of YouTube. I'm thankful to you all for that because I'll go on YouTube and make a video and say, I'm unboxing these 15 pairs of shoes. I really need to make myself list them. I'm going to do it. And so I washed shoes this week. I feel kind of proud of myself. Is there anything you're doing in your business right now that you just want to like give yourself a pat on the back for like, hey, this isn't my strong suit, but I'm doing it because I would love to give you a pat on the back for anything you're doing too. Bora Bora Jen is here. Hey, hey, I'm here too. So happy to see you. Okay. I think I did a bunch of hellos. Oh, there's also Victoria. How's it going with you, Victoria? How is vintage land? For those of you that really uh, love selling vintage, how are sales with that? And has that been affected at all by the pandemic or a season or what? We have 37 friends watching. So hoping we have 37 
thumbs up. Okay. Oh, Tabitha made it. Sorry if I missed anyone. I'm doing my best over here. I am here at, and here's her Poshmark closet. And you can find her at, at tab takes in or whatever that says. Um, Instagram, Facebook, kid is in. She's got all her stuff in here. Got a kid's Goodwill blue box a few hours ago. Can't wait for it to get here. I've never got the kid's box. Tell me in the chat, do you sell kids clothes? Why or why not? I sell kids, kids clothes if I see certain brands. There are certain brands I know I can still get like 15 bucks for. Kids clothes for me can sell, but often not for as much. I have a video up on the channel about how to sell baby clothes where I lot everything together and I teach you how to do that because I made some good money this year selling lots of baby clothes because I got a ton of them um, uh, during free inventory coming to me during quarantine. Okay, I'm going back up so I don't miss any of this good conversation and pop your name in again if I didn't get a chance to say hi, like Donna Lucky Boutique. I'm Donna from Pennsylvania as well. Are you anywhere near our other friend from Pennsylvania? Okay, let's see what Joey needs a little of our love. So let's dish it out. Zoe, Jomar is really bumming me out. My box was left on the sidewalk outside my city building address. Five items were stolen and the rest was thrown on the sidewalk. And Jomar says, not our problem. Okay, that's a complicated one. That is tricky because... Okay, do you think that, to me, I don't know, Zoe, to me that sounds like a USPS issue or a FedEx issue, like whoever whoever sent it to you left it in the wrong spot, or are you saying Joe Mar packed it poorly? That would be on them, um, but it kind of sounds to me like it might not be a Joe Mar issue, it might be a, uh, a postal issue, like whoever, I think they use FedEx or UPS, and they left it on the street, I don't know if that's Joe Mar, but if I was Joe Mar, I'd still be like, oh, that stinks. How can we work with you? I would hope, but let me know what you guys think or if I've got that wrong. I'm just trying to, um, I, and I wanna say I totally validate the frustration. Ooh, Sarah Lee Coleman says she sells vintage kids, kids clothes. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Sarah Lee? I know a little bit, but I'm not an expert, but there are certain vintage kids clothes that sell really well, like little certain smocked dresses and things. I'm not a big vintage seller. I collect certain things. Like I have a whole collection of um, baby dresses from the 1900s. I have them all folded in a little box in my hallway. Um, so, but I don't know, like in terms of uh, that selling stuff, like what sells the best. So maybe you can educate us a little bit. So he says, I was so surprised at Jamar's response and refusal to take accountability. And UPS says I can file a claim for some reason. I can't file a claim really bummed out. That is a total bummer. Look at this mom and daughter resellers. I love you guys. Hi, I love your channel. I just started my own channel, mom and daughter resellers. You're so great at doing videos. You're such a natural teacher and your videos always keep my attention. Hold up. Thank you so much for that amazing comment. I don't know. Maybe some of you can comment on this. I've been on over a year, I think a year and a half, maybe even a little bit more since my very first video. And it is a total learning curve. I don't feel confident, like I've got amazing videos. I'm really trying. Once I got the hang of the basics, like how to make a thumbnail, how to make a title, I'm now working on editing. I hope I can make better videos for you guys, but I really do appreciate that. Um, okay, but that's here. Hi y'all, I'm still consistently listing five every day on all three platforms. Woo, it's challenging. I did Plato's Closet Hall 80% off. Is your Plato's Closet open? How does that work where you are? That is awesome. Five every day. Tell us what you've learned, Babette. Like, how long have you consistently been listing five every day and on three platforms? And what are you noticing? That would be a great, like, documentary for resellers. Okay. Renee and Rob, re rescue and resell. I feel like our sales are good with vintage. People have extra time on their hands. Yeah, my, I think online sales, I think we're in a good, I think we're in a good position as online sellers. God forbid, it's like if I had a brick and mortar, I'd be really worried. But I, my, my sales personally have not been affected by the pandemic. I, if anything, they might have been like improved. Oops, I just opened a screen. Okay. Nicole says at Birdie Looks, I have a lot to photograph and list right now. I woke up so excited to get work done and I don't feel like I did what I was hoping to get done. Oh my gosh, that's a story of my life, Nicole. You should see my list and my to-do list and every day I wake up like, I'm gonna kill it today. I'm gonna get all these things and then something happens and then 
I mean, I'm pretty disciplined and focused, but it, I don't think I, it's very rare. Let me just say that I end the day going nailed this day, <laughs> got everything done. I'm, I'm such a good reseller. I photographed, I listed like that's a rare day that takes at least a few espressos. <laughs> But um, most of the time, I'm like, how did that happen? And reminder, you have two kids at home, two little, little kids. What you do amazes me when I see what you do. You're amazing, Nicole. Amazing. Donna says, things are rainy in PA. A new Goodwill opened here, and I got in the first day. Lots of good tops from Stitch Fix. I wonder why so many are selling these. You know what? I started Stitch Fix this year. I'm still doing it. I kind of love it. It's like a subscription service where you get a stylist. I have a bunch of videos on my channel. If anyone wants to try it, I have a $25 credit, which is awesome. You start off with some money in your account. Um, but the Stitch Fix tops are very expensive, I think, as a reseller thrifter. I mean, because they're like $58, $68, $78 for a simple, like, it, this is a free people blouse, but something like this that I buy all the time. So, like, I noticed what I've started doing, and I think many other people are probably doing, Donna, is... I like a top and I'm like, oh, I like this brand. I like these Daniel Rain peasant blouses. They're great for work. So I go on eBay and I'm like, Daniel Rain. And the, I can get those blouses for like 20 bucks instead of 60. So I think putting Stitch Fix in your title and learning Stitch Fix brands is going to help your business. Okay, I'm going up. I'm supposed to be going down, but I just wanna make sure I don't miss anything. There's so just good stuff. Barbara says she's doing the 50 listings from scratch. I'm doing mostly jewelry, accessories on Poshmark. And for eBay, I'm doing lots of jewelry and watches. I need less photos so it's easier. But still, 50 is like, that's impressive. That's really impressive. Leslie says, I was live four times this week, twice on my channel and two on friends channels. You are all about the live, Leslie, and you're so good at it. Um, okay, let me see, because I'm missing, missing, missing the context of some of these comments. Gino's finds, am I saying that right? I rushed right over to join in on all the fun. We do have fun and I'm so happy to welcome you in, Gino. I've seen a couple of your videos, your like thrifting videos. Resale Royalty says, I love the Goodwill Blue Box. I order every week, oh my gosh. I actually ordered a Goodwill Blue Box. So if you don't know, the Goodwill has, they sell mystery boxes called the Blue Box, Just just Google Goodwill Blue Box. They're pretty cheap. They um, put them out on Fridays at 3 p.m. Pacific time. So that's three, is that 6 p.m. Eastern time? They sell out really fast. And you can see reviews. I have some on my channel. A lot of people have um, reviews. So you can see what they're like. Um, I got one today too. I got a denim one because I went on there at like 320. I'm not trying to get them any all the time. It just occurred to me and I was like, oh, man, let me go check. And most things were sold out. So I just got a denim. I'm, I got a denim because I noticed all my denim bins are getting really low. So I'm, I'm selling a lot of denim. I think people are wearing comfy clothes, leggings and jeans. So I'm selling a lot of denim. So hopefully that'll be good. But my experience with Goodwill Blue Box, more than any other mystery box, this is just my experience, um, is hit or miss. Some can be like amazing. Some can kind of be like not so good. I prefer Thread Up or Joe Mar, but um, I'm still going to do some Goodwill Blue Box because I'm a mystery box addict. Uh, James says, I clean shoes to a point and then I sell as is. I don't get crazy. Yeah, I can't get crazy, but I personally just don't feel comfortable in my store. I did when I first started out, but now as a seller, oh shoot, I got to find that comment way up there. Um, I just don't like, I don't know how to hide the current, there we go the current comment. Um, I don't like taking pictures personally for me. I take them on a whiteboard background. I just don't like a dirty, like a really dirty solar shoe just for me personally. And I sell a lot of like athletic shoes, like Keens and stuff sell really well for me. Outdoor shoes that have dirt all on the bottom. And I just try and scrub them. So it's not like active dirt and stones in the tread for me personally. Um, what do you guys think about that? Okay, let's see. Please subscribe and hit the bell notifications and hit the thumbs up. If you're watching the replay, friends, or if you're here now, make sure you're subscribed. If you don't have the bell turned on, then you don't get a notification when I go live. I'm live every Friday at five on the channel. 
but I also do pop-ups every once in a while. I every once in a while have a guest on. So if you don't have the bell turned on, which is a mistake I made on other people's channels for a while until I learned, you don't get the notifications and that kind of stinks. Okay, Christy Blocker's here. Hey girl. Hey, reselling family. So good to see ya. I saw you over on Leslie's channel. Resale Royalty says, Stitch Fix is super expensive. It is. I did, I mean, it depends though. It's all relative. Like. It's super expensive for me as like a bin shopper, a thrifter, like for me, five bucks for a top is expensive. But if you're coming from like, you know, the mall world or department sale world, it's pretty affordable. I did it in 2020 because I was like, this year stinks. I need something for myself to look forward to something fun. And I've got some really great stuff that I love. So I'm going to keep doing it for a little while. We'll see how it goes. I want to thank all of you who have been sending me your reseller goals for 2021. I don't know, what was it, last week or a little while ago, I did a show with Leslie here live on the channel at A Reseller's Passion, and we did a vision board workshop tutorial, kind of just talking about it. So if you're interested, there's still time. It's only January 15th. Make a vision board. They're very powerful reminders of what you want to draw into your life, the changes you want to make, um, your intentions, your purpose. They're very powerful tools. Um, some of you know that I'm a reseller part-time, but I'm a full-time psychotherapist and I've used them for years with my clients. They don't just have to be about 2021 20, goals. They can be about any issue or any way you feel stuck or anything you want to manifest in your life. They're really powerful. And so if you didn't get a chance to talk to us about your 2021 20, goals or your word, please put it in the chat. And I appreciate all of you who just sent me messages like that just is really meaningful for me that we're connecting on that level. And I want to support you in whatever your goals are and saying them on people is really helpful. Um, it, it just helps reinforce. It's all about reminding, envisioning and reinforcing what you want for yourself. So make sure to share it with as many people as you can journal about it make art about it, talk about it, whatever you can do, you start, um, you just start living from that place of what you intend when you are talking about it, sharing about it. Oh, Ashley Gibson is here saying hello, new friend to the channel. So happy to have you. So what Babette's noticing is that she's definitely got more consistent sales on all the platforms. I think I'll do posture VA because I'm only sharing my closet once a day. Anyone in the chat want to talk a little bit about what Posture VA is? Feel free. Okay. Going on up here. Someone's saying preach. Okay, here we go. James says, I bet this is back to the Joe Mar issue. Still a UPS issue, I'd think. Definitely put in a claim with them. Where do boxes usually go when they're delivered? I'm sorry that happened. Me too. I totally feel like I feel for you. I'm sorry. Did you say anything else? Like, because I did a con, I kind of think it's a US, a delivery issue too. I don't really think it's Joe Mar's issue unless they didn't package it well, which has happened. Listen, guys, Joe Mar is a company. It's a company trying to grow. I think their heart's in the right place. Their mind's in the right place. They might be trying to grow a little too fast. Um, the biggest complaint I hear about Joe Mar is that it takes a long time to get a box. I hear you. I agree with you. But manage your expectations, like I always say, with all the mystery, mystery boxes. And then it's fun and enjoyable and awesome. My box took five weeks to get here. But guess what? Watch that video. It's amazing. The brands I got in my Jomar box, I could never get for three to five bucks here. I mean, it's worth it. And I don't need it right away. If you need a box, like you need inventory now, don't even do it. Like, don't even deal with that. Get it a different way. But, um, I, I, I believe in the company. I'm really happy with my boxes and, um, and they make mistakes and you need to communicate and advocate for yourself. hundred percent. Ooh, I see a little super chatty. I wish I could find it, but I'm still not good at managing this chat. <laughs> oh, Deborah Anderson gave me a super chat. I really do appreciate that. Thanks for being such an inspiration for me. Thank you, Deborah. You inspire me. You know what? You should tell people more about what it is you're doing because I think, Deborah, they would be very inspired by your story. Maybe you could put it a little bit in the chat now. I mean, I just like to say I feel really proud of Deborah because she reached out to me, I don't know, months ago, and she's like, hey, listen, I kind of want to retire. And could I do it with, with reselling? And she's just been like growing and, and um, 
working on her reselling business to supplement her income so that she could leave work earlier. I mean, isn't that just so amazing? Like reselling allows her to do that. And I know that Deborah's story is not totally rare. I know a lot of people in our community who have used reselling business to transition. Let us know if you have a story like that. Like it is so inspiring. It's like, you know, there's so many ways the reselling business has allowed us to make some extra money to stay home with our kids. I mean, I used it that way when I was going to leave hospice where I worked as a psychotherapist for 10 years because I wanted to be home with my son Torvald um, when he went to kindergarten. I didn't, I didn't want to be the mom who was working full time. I wanted to be the mom. And this is just for me personally. You do whatever you need to do for your family. But and Torvald has certain sensitivities, you know, like um, the transition to school was going to be a little challenging for him. I just wanted to be the mom that was in the school. I volunteered like I was there two or three times a week in the classroom. I wanted that. So I used reselling. So I knew I could earn a couple thousand dollars a month while I built my private practice. So it was amazing like that. I love stories like that. Let me know if you have one. Maybe I should do a video about it and have you guys on. Oh my God. <laughs> I made the water and I put lemon in it and I just tasted it and was like, what is up with that? Thank you, Deborah. I appreciate you. Veronica made it in. Good to see you, Veronica. Did I miss anyone else that came in? If so, let me know. Mickle Pickle Pie. I've been chatting with you and I've been really enjoying it. Did anyone send out offers to likers this afternoon? I made four sales from sending out 30% offers. Oh my God, that's awesome. Um, I don't know if I did. I don't think I did. I don't do a whole lot with like on Poshmark with closet clear out and all that. I just do like my regular thing, but 30% is a significant um, offer. So I think that was super smart. When you send out offers on Poshmark, what's your strategy guys? And um, what do you usually send out? Like my minimum that I send out is 20% with 499 shipping. If I just wanna, if I'm like, I need some sales, I need to clear things out, I'll send more. But 30% is a pretty significant offer. So I'm not surprised you got sales because you were doing 30% with 4.99 shipping. I mean, that's a pretty significant offer. So you probably made some people really happy and you made four sales. <gasps> Pigeon's Nest is here. Yay, Super Chat Deborah. I do appreciate that. Okay, let, okay, here's Michelle, Courageously Thriving. Hello everyone, I'm Michelle at Courageously Thriving on Instagram. Loving hanging out with you guys on Friday nights. Thank you so much, I'm so glad you joined us. There were some people that like I knew on Instagram and now they're over on YouTube, so it's so cool. I like Instagram that way because it's more like I try and do more, more regular story shares and you just see kind of a lot more of people over there than you can maybe do on YouTube. Oh, good. Uh, Charlene made it. I was just thinking about you today, Charlene. Hi, Quenby and gang. Charlene is Islet Dreams reseller. I spent the day sorting piles of SML to make reseller boxes. Oh, my gosh. And the less than... And the less than pristine stuff is getting donated. Oh, so it sounds like you're doing like an overhaul. How are you going to sell the mystery boxes? And you're doing them by size. That I mean, a lot of people don't do them by size even. So if someone ordered a mystery box, they could um, they could select by size. That's pretty amazing. Nicole says, Jomar is wonderful, but yes, they're imperfect, just like all of us. I mean, it's so true, isn't it? It's like I always try, like, listen, has it gone through my mind that I'm a little frustrated with Jomar? Yeah. Have I had to reach out to them a couple times because my boxes are, like, taking so long? Yeah. I have one right now that I ordered. It was, like, an anthropology and free people top box. I ordered it five, almost six weeks ago, and it still hasn't been shipped. So I'm like, oh, I'd at least like to know, like, what's going on with it? So I reached out to them, but I don't get bent out of shape about stuff like that. Not to say, I mean, everyone, it's normal to have a response. Like our friend whose box was left outside, of course, she's going to have a response about that. 100%. I totally get it. That's human and normal. But I try and just like go, okay, like I don't want to let myself get too um, thrown off by stuff like that because that stuff happens in life all the time. Every single day, you can look at things like that that are happening, things that didn't go your way, things that didn't go as planned, somebody didn't call, somebody was late, somebody's returning their item on eBay, somebody's, you know, like that is life. That is the stuff of life every day. And it's like, if I take too much time to get all 
upset about those things or frustrated or, you know, it's just like, I'm going to be frustrated and upset every single day because that is life. Human beings are messy. Businesses are run by human beings. There's going to be stuff like that that happens. So try to do your best to like breathe through it. You got to respond, but not have a huge reaction. Um, it, it, look at this. Reseller's Passion says, I relaxed all day. Perfect timing. <laughs> I relaxed all day. This doesn't happen often. Have been really lazy all day. Back on my hustle tomorrow. I think you're really good at that, Leslie. I'm not the best. I have been at other times in my life, but not the best right now. Um, Zoe says, Jomar customer service is slow right now. It took six days for me to even hear back about my box issue. Not sure if they have an up tick of happy unhappy customers reaching out totally hear you zoe and that's not cool and i also just a tip i sometimes will mess it i'll email it i will email them then i'll also um message them on instagram i sometimes get a response over there faster but i totally agree i think this is really good feedback for the company and you should express your feedback you know what i mean it's good for them to hear that stuff relaxed all day i just love it Okay, here we go. I'm going up to see what is going on. Terry made it in. Hey, Terry. Terry Turkmani is with us. So good to see you. Heidi says, normally on eBay, I send offers to watchers of 25% to about 10 to 15 a day. Almost always get a sale or two except this week. You know what, Heidi? That I totally agree. And that is amazing because I think it was just 2019, 2019 that eBay rolled out offers to watchers so on ebay they're not called likers like on posh it's a watcher and they didn't have that feature before you could run a sale on ebay but that's a newer feature and i make so many sales that way too i don't have like a set number in my mind but i try and do like a significant offer because i want to move my stuff and i make a lot of sales that way as well those of you that sell on Macari, Depop, or some of these other sites, did they have those kind of like offers to likers or watchers features? I haven't been over there, but I think it's like, um, I think that's like a really great feature. I'm so glad they rolled that out. Trisha M is here saying, hi, good to see you. I remember you coming in last week. Really glad you made it back. Looking to see what else people have to say up in here. Ooh, look at James. I got a vintage Gucci bag in my Jomar vintage bag box. Oh my gosh. Also a Paloma Picasso and Salvatore Ferragamo tooled leather bag, 80s style, real quality. I was very happy. Wow. That's amazing. So I have not tried the Jomar handbag box or any of their vintage. So if you guys have, let me know. I know that um, Leslie at a reseller's passion has done really well with the scarf box and vintage box. I probably have to get more on the vintage train. I don't do a ton of it. Um, I just don't know. I mean, I know certain things like everyone's, if, if I wore it in high school, it's hot right now, the eighties and nineties, I'm 44. And like, it's just still so stunning to me to see girls walking around like in the exact sweatshirt I wore in 1990 or the guest jeans with the triangle packet pocket the triangle logo on the back pocket that I was so dying to get in the 90s. <laughs> I remember my mom got me a pair for Christmas and I was like, oh my God, you just had to have that triangle on the back. And guess what? Those sell for a lot, those guests. So I, like, if I see something like that, I'm like, okay, good. Um, I like more kind of beyond, not, not 80s, 90s, current vintage, but a little um, farther back than that is what I kind of like myself, maybe from like the 20s and 30s. So have any of you guys um, been shopping at the online Goodwill for your reselling business? I've been doing a lot of shopping this week. I did two big orders on shopgoodwill.com. Do you guys, are you familiar with that? I put a few videos up on my channel about sourcing from Goodwill online. And I know a lot of people have trouble with it. Like that the shipping is tricky or it does take time to sift through, but I'm telling you, I get some really great stuff. I got a Pendleton, one of the older wool vintage shirts that I think is going to sell between 50 and 100 bucks when I looked on eBay. So I really love sourcing on there. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to um, try and help you with that. I have some videos on it where like, I, I'm sitting there and I'm like showing you myself on my computer on the site. Just watch out for shipping costs. But um, 
Veronica says, I sent out CCO messages, crickets so far. Let's see. Oh, James is talking to Holly saying, you loved your B&G box. Mine was awful. I got a B&G box recently. I haven't done them a lot. Um, and mine was okay. It was a new with tag, like a basic kind of like mid-range box. I should follow up and see what sold from that box. Resale Royalty says, I send out offers to likers about 30 times a day. Most of my sales are from the offers. No taker so far today. Wow. So how many, Resale Royalty, how many um, How many items do you have in your Poshmark closet to be able to send out 30 a day? That means you're getting lots of likes. And James is saying that happens to me too, Zoe. Um Let's see. Zoe says my post Xmas sale messed me up because I had my whole closet 50% off. I made a ton of sales, but now I think people are hoping for bigger discounts. Yeah, I've noticed in my my reselling business, um, the one thing I have noticed since the pandemic is I do feel like people are, um, I'm selling a lot more like 12, 15, $20 items. Like I think people right now with the economy and unemployment and uncertainty. I think people are looking for deals. So I'm trying to give them to them. Like I've still sold some other great stuff, but it's like, um, I do a lot of lower kind of what I call like lower dollar, lower end brand stuff like that. And I'm doing a lot of, um, I'm doing a lot of, um, just lower sales. Mickle pickle pie says I typically send offers of 10 to 20% on Thursdays. And once a quarter I send off 30% to my whole closet. Wow. That's probably smart. That is sounds really smart. And Leslie says, since I run my business full time, offers to likers doesn't fit my business model. Offers to likers is definitely a great way to move items fast. Wow. I'd love to hear more about that. So you're not big on sending out offers. You're just like, Hey, I don't, is it, I'm wondering if it's cause like, um, you don't need to move things quickly or something. So you're just like rather get the full amount. Bora Bora Jen, guys, I still like Posture VA. They send offers for me and I make a lot of sales that way. It's working for me. So in case anyone doesn't know, Posture VA is one of the many options out there if you want to use automation for your Poshmark closet. It's a little bit controversial because technically um, it is against the rules to use a bot or AKA automation according to Poshmark rules, it's also become kind of the norm and so many people are doing it that I'm sort of waiting to see how it plays out and what happens for people. I did a live show um, with Vandy's Closet where we talked about this issue. Nickel Pickle Pie says, I don't do closet clear out though. I never figured out how to make it work for me. I don't really do pot closet clear out. You know, I have a lot of growth to do. I've been on eBay for 10 years selling. I kind of know what I'm doing over there. It's been like my main platform and Poshmark has been kind of my side hustle to my side hustle, but I really am focusing on Poshmark more. And I feel like I'm having some success with that. I want to do more on Poshmark. So maybe that's an uh, area of growth for me, maybe learning more about closet clear out. Pigeon's Nest says, I made an inventory spreadsheet finally yesterday from my inventory sales report on Poshmark, and I'm super excited about it. An inventory spreadsheet finally. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm, I'm not quite that detailed anymore. I was when I first started out. I remember, you know, my first few years of reselling, I used to write down every single item I bought, what I paid for it, and then I'd have a column when it sold and what my profit was. I did all that stuff. And then I don't do it that level of detail anymore. Veronica says, yeah, same, 12 to $15 sales, which really stinks on Posh with the fees. Yeah, because fees on Poshmark are 20%. So on eBay, fees are only 10% plus you pay um, like it used to be 3% and 29 cents for PayPal. Now some people are on managed payments. It's a little bit less, but it's still a lot. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't love it. I, well, this is the way I think of it personally for me and my business. I think of it like this. My business kinds of runs on kind of runs on bread and butter. 
I sell on eBay, especially a lot of Chico's and Style & Co and J. Jill and Levi's and just basic stuff, you know, in the 15 to $20 range. And then I get some great sales, like a handful a month. I'll get a $50 handbag sale or a $100 jeans sale or something great like that. Um, but that is kind of my business model. I guess you'd consider me more of a quick flipper. I mean, I'm not selling things for five bucks, but I mean, you know, 12 bucks, I probably do a handful of $12 sales a week, you know, and my business kind of runs on that and I'm okay with that. And then I, I, I have some other higher dollar sales peppered in there. And so it all works out for me. Um, Pigeons Nest says, I don't use Posture VA for offers, but I use Miss Yancey's VA for sharing and it's worth every penny. I have not heard about that. So maybe you can educate us. Jen says, I can't share 800 items several times a day. I I'm with you too. Well, I can. I don't know if I quite have eight on Posh, but probably close because I've been using Bendu to cross post everything I ever had on eBay, which is over a thousand items to Posh. I think I'm almost there. But um, I mean, I technically can. <laughs> I just hate it. Like, and I don't, I'm not a hate sayer. You guys know I'm kind of like, it's not my style, but it makes me so aggravated that it's not good for my health or my business. <laughs> that's why I hire it out. Now that's not true for everybody. Some people don't mind sharing. They love sharing or it's part of it. No problem. And that's fantastic if that's you. But um, for me, it just doesn't work for me. I won't be able to sell on Posh because it'll drive me crazy. And I like Posh. Kim Miller's with us. Closet clear out doesn't work for me, but I do offers to likers on the most recent likes on Thursdays and Fridays. I usually get three to five sales. I'd be happy on Posh with three to five sales. That sounds awesome. Heidi says, I've decided my sales are being affected by a distracted nation and massive clearance sales at online and brick and mortar retailers. Wow. So that's a really good point. So for you, it's almost like the competition, the competition of massive clearance sales everywhere and um, stores just doing massive sales. And that's like, that's taking away from your sales, you're thinking. Kim says, I'm blessed that I have downtime at work to share. Oh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Like you're at one job working and you can just take the 20 minutes to share from your other one. Julie Lopez is here. Hey, she says, hi, everyone. Tell us a little bit about you, Julie Lopez. Where do you sell? Where do you live? What's going on in your reselling world? Okay, let me see what else. Um, Rachel is here. Good to see you, Rachel. We were just talking about Joe Mar, and I was sharing about Rachel is the social media queen at Joe Mar. So I've got to chat with her a little bit. And I was just sharing about my amazing Jomar uh, basic women's box. It was crazy. I got such good brands. Part one is up. Part two will be up next week. Oh, this is what Leslie was saying. I don't send offers on Poshmark. I accept offers. Wow. Can I just stop and pause for a minute? Because I don't hear many people say I don't send offers on Poshmark. I accept offers. I don't have the time to send offers to likers. Time wise, it doesn't work probably for my business model. I would rather send offers on eBay. Wow. Does anybody else, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the chat. Does anybody else um, subscribe to this same model that they don't send offers? I guess in my mind, and I've only been on there, what is it? Two, almost three years. And I guess in my mind, and this was so different for me coming from selling on eBay for 10 years, friends. It, um, in my mind, it's like, that's, I thought, you know, that I think of it like, that's kind of part of posh, like sharing. Most people think you have to share on Posh to make sales, except our good friend, Barbara Babash. If she's still here in the chat, maybe she can educate us a little bit about that. So I'm thinking, you know, I make almost all my sales, not all, but almost all on Posh, sending an offer, accepting an offer. Offers just seems like the way it is where it wasn't like that on eBay. It wasn't like that for me on eBay for the longest time. Zoe says, Holly, I have gotten some unreal lowball offers recently. It is hard not to get irritated. <clears throat> but I assume sometimes people accept them. Otherwise, people wouldn't keep doing it. It's a really good point, Zoe. I, again, and it's kind of like how I feel about the other things I was talking about. I do not get upset by lowball offers. I don't even react. In my mind, 
you know, it's business. It's not personal. Um, someone's going to send me a $5 offer. I'm going to counter an offer that I think is reasonable. And um, maybe if they like try and counter back with $6, $7, I might decline. But I, I think you're absolutely right, Zoe. I think um, people do accept those offers. People, people are always trying to clear stuff out. Who knows what's going on with their closet or their store? People are selling stuff for five bucks. So of course a buyer is going to be like, hey, you've got it listed for 30. Let's see if I can get it for five. My policy on both Poshmark and eBay is always to counter. I always counter every offer, even if it's a dollar. The worst that's going to happen is they're going to come back with another low offer. But I can't tell you, friends, how many times it has resulted in a sale for me. So I try and keep my, as much as possible, and I'm a human being, but I try and keep the emotions and the taking it personally out of the business. It is a business. I'm a reselling business. It, it, I don't know this person from another state, this random username that's sending me an offer. I just counter right back and keep going on with my day. I don't, I don't give it another second thought. I don't get aggravated. I might say like, yeah, I'm not accepting your dollar offer. I'm sending back a $30 offer. But, you know, try not to let the little things, sweating the small stuff. If you want to last in reselling, I think the best tip that I can give you is, um, you know, to kind of manage your, your reactions. Don't sweat the small stuff and be flexible. Be flexible. Be willing to change because things are changing all the time. Something that's working for you may suddenly start not working for you. Just like in life, just like in family, just like in relationship, the more flexible you can be, the more resilient, um, the more success that you are going to have. Look at, listen to Terry. Terry is one of my wise friends. I'm so glad she's in my circle. Low offers is a form of negotiating. I counter and send a nice note. I get sales from those offers as well, Quemby. If you're if you're willing, Terry, would you share with us um, what you say in a note? I don't do a note. I just do the offer. But I have heard people say there's some statistic going around. Maybe one of you know it. Like I, I remember seeing it on Posh, some newsletter or something. Like you're more, you're 10% more likely to make a sale if you leave a comment or a note, something like that. I don't do it, but if you're willing to share, I would love to hear it. 57 friends are watching right now, so I hope I've got about 57 likes. And I hope that you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss these live shows. We want to have you. We want to support you in whatever it is you're doing in your reselling business. We want to help educate you, support you, lift you up, build you up in any way we can. Restyle secrets. Anyone sold Mammut? I've sold Marmot, but I've never heard of Mammut. Maybe you can let us know. Look at this. Rachel's here and says, at Zoe, I've escalated your issue in our customer service team. Thank you. I love that, Rachel. We were talking to Zoe about sort of maybe the best way to handle those issues and whether it's a UPS issue rather more than a Jomar issue possibly in that situation, but I appreciate that. Let's see what Leslie, my wise sister, has to say. At a reseller's passion, there are no lowball offers. There is a price point for everyone. Your item is only worth what it is sold for. Just my opinion. Agree with Quemby, it is business. Some people don't care about low offers. I don't really care. I mean, I might have a, a little human moment and be like, yeah, no, you're not getting it for a dollar, but I just, it's business. I, I don't know if it, all you guys know, but I'm working on YouTube on an eBay for beginners series. I have about five videos in it so far. I've been selling on eBay 10 years and I'm working on a video right now about how to deal with negative feedback if you get it. And also I've done a video on returns. The return one comes out Sunday, I believe, how to handle a return. And one of the things that I talk about in that video is the logistics, of course, how do you respond? Where do you find it on the eBay site? But the other part I talk about is the emotional piece of it, that these things can be disappointing. Uh, it's about money and people get emotional around money because there's fear involved for a lot of people around money. And how to find a way to say to yourself, I'm taking a breath. This is business. This is not personal. This is business. This is not emotional. Now, is my business personal to me in some way? It is because I care about it. I love my business. Um, it brings me so much joy. It brings me money. So I have feelings about it in that I care and I'm invested and I'm committed. But it's not a personal thing to you. It's not an attack on you. If someone wants to return an item, 
if somebody sends a lowball offer, my suggestion, just try it out, see if it works for you. This is just one person's perspective is to say to yourself, oh, I'm gonna remember, this is not personal, it's business. They're offering me five, I want 50. I'm gonna counter what I want and move on with my life. I really like what Terry said here, a form of negotiating. And in a lot of cultures, you guys, negotiating is part of the process. In a lot of other cultures, people don't just buy it right out. That's just not how it's done. They're gonna negotiate. And, they, and some, either, some cultures, people even feel offended if you're not willing to negotiate. Oh, I love talking with you guys. Happy Friday, friends. How could it be? 50 minutes already. I feel like I'm just getting started. <laughs> hmm. Another good thing about Macari, they don't allow lowball offers. There's a minimum amount a buyer needs to offer. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know what I think about that. You can set that up on eBay as well. I don't know if you can on Poshmark. Let me know if anyone knows. But on eBay, you, when you're building your listing, you can check a little box that says the lowest offer I'm willing to accept is. If you're someone that just has a hard time managing feelings around that or you don't want to deal with it, you're busy and you're like, no, you can check that little box. I don't rem I don't recommend it when I do eBay coaching with people. I don't um, I don't recommend it because you lose your ability to negotiate. Say I have an item on there, Levi's jeans, and I want twenty five dollars and I'm filling out my listing and I say I check the box. that says I won't negotiate. I, I won't accept offers that are twenty dollars and less. But then what if someone offers you 19? When you check that box, you completely discount the $19 offer. I don't do that personally because I want to be able to negotiate. And like many of us are telling you, sometimes those negotiations result in sales. So that's just my two cents. Let's see what Gino has to say. People lowball hoping you might be desperate. I don't get mad. I just counter. James, why does Siri hates me. <laughs> why, why does Siri hate you? What's happening over there? Michelle says, nah, the Loba offers, I'm on Facebook group and they're all over. Most are scams. Yeah, we're not, yeah, not, not scammies. Julie Lopez says, I started reselling about seven months ago and only sell on applications, Facebook marketplace. Oh my gosh. I'm welcome to the world of reselling, Julie. Seven months in my mind, that's kind of a beginner. And there's so much for you to learn. I'm so excited for you on your journey. Why just Macari? Have you considered Poshmark or eBay or any of the other platforms? Welcome. We are so glad to see you. Um, Kim says, Leslie, I'm with you. If I get in a, sh a one share and not two, I'm not heartbroken. It's all about balance. Oh, look at this. Terry says, I do not send a lot of offers on Poshmark. Wow, you guys are educating me. I send them like once a week. Allison says, I have arthritis in my hands and could never share 100 items two to three times a day. I have someone do that for me. I really love that you're saying that, Allison. And the reason I love it is because it makes us stop for a minute and go, oh, yeah. Sometimes our mind is so quick to judge. It's just the way it's called the negativity bias. Most people's brains and minds have it. It's natural. But we immediately go in with like, well, why can't she share? I can't like some part of our brain just kind of naturally does it. It's normal. Don't judge yourself for doing it. You can train yourself out of it. But um, then you get somebody like Allison who's like, but wait, I have a medical issue. Like, I literally can't do that. I'm so thankful that I can hire someone to do it. I love that. That's a better excuse than me. I just don't like doing it. <laughs> I just don't like sharing. I'm like, oh my God, this is like mind numbing. 800. So I hire it out. You have to know what your strengths and your weaknesses are as a reseller. We all have strengths and weaknesses. We all have areas where we're like, I'm killing that area. I'm so good at sourcing. Look at me. And then areas where you're like, yeah, but I'm not doing well at this. Hire it out. James, last week, our friend in Cheek Boutique was talking about how he's hired things out and what success he's having with that. So it's like, do what works for you. Be willing to learn. Be willing to make it work for you. Oh, I got another super chatty. I got to find it. It turns green on my screen. Thank you so much from Evolving Always Productions, $4.99. Great live as usual, Quenby. Have a great night. So happy to have you here. I love it. And I'll see you on Sunday. You can find Evolving Always Productions over on Instagram. She has a ton of motivating, inspiring, supportive content. She's also started a YouTube channel that she's growing. And who you, if you're still here, Terry, you might have had to pop off, but 
who are you having over there on Sunday? Because I know I made a note that I want to be on your channel on Sunday. So if you want to chat with me in the chat, because I don't get to chat in the chat the way you guys do. I'm sometimes jealous. Um, I'll be on, I'll be over at Terry's. Yeah. Oh, dusty leather and lace made it. Hey, all great to see you again. So glad you're here. And I just want to say hi again to reseller Wendy. Not sure whether I um, got a chance to really say hi to you. Let's see. Mickle Pickle Pie says, yes, they will just, they will just uh, you a low offer on Mercari. I've gotten lots of sales that way by negotiating and then drop the price to what we agree to. I see. But you know what, you guys, this is just me speaking about my experience and what I do with offers. Take it in. Take in your colleagues, your peers here who are in the chat. Be open-minded enough to be like, huh, I didn't think about it that way. That way. This is how I've always done it, but maybe let me consider what they have to say. And then guess what? Do what you want to do anyway. Do what you want to do because that's why you have a reselling business, right? For many of us, that's part of it. Yes, we want to make money, but for a lot of us, reselling means we are self-employed. We are our own boss. We do not have to you know, check somebody and say, hey, I'm not feeling so great. I need the day off. No, it's your own business. You're just not going to list that day. Or we don't have to say, hmm, I don't agree with this return policy, but I just have to do it. No, you get to make all these decisions for yourself. So we come here on Fridays, issues come up about reselling world, and we talk about them, right? And you hear other people's perspective, and hopefully you keep an open enough mind and heart to be like, huh, let me try that on and see if that works for me. If it doesn't, just do what you want to do. I totally support you doing what you want to do in your own business. I totally respect you doing what you want to do. Foxy Roxy is talking to Rachel. I'm trying to get closer to the bottom of my death pile. Then I will give Jomar a try. You guys know I have like what? At, at least five, maybe 10 Jomar unboxings on my channel. So you get to see the real deal of what shows up in those boxes. I have gotten like, I've gotten the men's box, which has been my absolute favorite. I have two pairs of jeans I've sold in there, one for 150 and one for 105. That box has been paid for twice with just those two items. I got a Victoria's Secret box. I got a Target warm weather um, jackets box. I've sold a ton of all that. The Victoria's Secret stuff has sold so well. Um, I love it. And I have a discount link because I'm an affiliate. It's in the description section. Try it out. And if you have questions, message me on Instagram or on YouTube, and I'm happy to help you do it because I think it's pretty great. Okay, reseller Wendy's here. Pigeon's Nest says, I love the negotiating aspect of Posh. I price my items to be able to barter. I try to remind a lot of customers of that. That's right. And I do this. I think we most of us do that. Let me know in the chat. I'm assuming you do that. Like, I price most of my items like 20% higher than I'm happy to get so that I can do offers. I'm telling you more of the time, I'm surprised when I make a full a full price sell. I'm like, oh my gosh, someone just bought that full price. I'm like so excited because that's more than I wanted for the item. I always price everything higher. I, I assume, are you guys doing that too to leave room for offers and negotiating? But maybe if you're someone like Leslie or maybe Terry who say they don't really do the offer thing, maybe you price it at what you want. Let me know. Rachel says, we at Jomar shipped out like five different pairs of Acne Studio shoes for $8 a piece this week. That's amazing. I have a pair of Acne jeans in my eBay store on Poshmark Closet, but I didn't know they were doing shoes. There you are, a hot, hot brand. So definitely check that out. Michelle says, I've been seeing things about new managed payments and getting surprise charges like FedEx. Someone was charged over 60 for a FedEx shipment. I must have missed what you're talking about. Managed payments, you guys, is eBay. I've been moved on eBay from PayPal to managed payments. Um, I'm not sure what that's about, but I did have something like that happen with managed payments and it was new and I was all freaked out. And I called eBay and I was on the phone with somebody. She went through every charge with me. And it turns out one of the ways that they charge on eBay, like for the store and the free services you get for having a store, they actually charge you and then they deduct it. So I was like, why am I getting charged for Terapeak? Why am I getting charged for all these like um, tools I can use because I have an eBay store? And she's like, well, go down a few lines. The way they do it is they charge you and then they deduct it. I don't know why they do it that way, but 
Um, that's the way they do it. So it's worth calling and getting it checked out. Um, oh, here it is. I don't know if Terry's still here. Of all the, this is the note she does with authors. My note, thank you so much for your interest. Due to my cost and posh fees, blank is the lowest I can go. I get sales usually every time. I'm gonna take a picture of it with my phone. I love you guys so much. Can I just say again how much I love you for showing up? Everybody that I'm talking to here right now, we have a few new people, but most of these people are here every single Friday and have been for months. We know each other now. We help each other out. We support each other. It's amazing. And I'm learning from you all the time. I'm going to take a picture of this, Terry, and then maybe, don't you hate it when you go to take a picture and it's on selfie? And at my age, I'm 44. I have like several chins that are like down here. Like, ugh, it's like the worst, the absolute worst. It's like, you, I can't change it fast enough. I, Terry is amazing, you guys. Um, just another one of the beautiful women in our community who's really um, got a lot of wisdom to share. Foxy Roxy. Um, oh, and Rachel says, I live and breathe list perfectly. I use Vendu. That's just the one that was recommended to me. But I know there's people in the chat here, if you have questions about it, that use both. Okay, so that note was awesome. Veronica says, I'm team list perfectly, but I think Vendu has improved since I first tried them. I just love bulk cross posting so much. I game changer. I have a video all about how to use Vendu, like step by step tutorial. I'm telling you, it is. Oh, here's a question. So Peyton in the Nest says, Vendu versus List Perfectly. That is a tricky one. They are both always changing. I have friends that use both. And you know what? I, I mean, I, I use Vendu because that's, I, I, I reached out to a few people who I think of as like almost mentors for me in reselling. Um, and they said Vendu, so I went with Vendu, but do a little bit of research. There's videos you can find on both, compare the packages. Yeah, Rachel says it's definitely a UPS issue, but we'll do what we can. That's what I was thinking with Zoe. Zoe, I'm so glad. Isn't it perfect that Rachel showed up and you got to chat? Because to me, a box being left out front like that, I, to me, it sounds more like a, a shipping issue, but... Uh, hopefully Jomar and USPS between both people, you can get it worked out. Um, let's see. Holly says, I tell my accountability group what I want to say, then counter on most, but some are red flags for case scammers. Yeah, I've never had a scamming situation, but I know people have. I mean, I know that gets sensationalized, like I've been scammed, but it's very rare. If, don't, don't worry, people. Don't worry so much about getting scammed. I mean, you might see a, a video, a clickbait video about being scammed, and every once in a while it happens to somebody, but don't let that stop you from doing what you want to do. Don't let fear of scammers stop you from selling on eBay or, or Facebook Marketplace. It's the it's rare. Just do your thing and, and trust that you know yourself well enough. You're an adult. If something like that happens, you can assess it for yourself. You're not going to get caught up in some scam. Just don't get all caught up in that. And don't worry about that. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Rachel saying Terry is amazing. She is just like such a cool new friend. I love meeting new friends. Right, let me go back down. We're about to finish up because it's been an hour, which for me feels like 10 minutes. You guys are so amazing with so many great comments. I appreciate you so much for showing up. Oh, look at Melissa made it. Hey, Melissa. Melissa's Vandy's Closet. She and I did a YouTube uh, video collab about automation on Poshmark, somewhat controversial issue. I'm saying that, Melissa, because it came up earlier in our chat and I referenced it. So if you're like, I don't know what to do about that or what, what are the risks or what are the rules, head on over to Melissa's channel and you can see she and I just talking about it. And you can educate yourself and decide what is best for you in your own business. Kim Miller says, I'm so thankful to have learned to price a little higher to allow for negotiations. I learned this from all of the awesome YouTube folks out there with you guys. I'm sure I would have quit. Yeah, see, that's what's so awesome. Just stay with it. Margaret's Market says, Business days, though, if it sells Friday night, it's not great. I liked PayPal better for that reason. Okay, I must there must be something going on up here that was really good that I missed. 
Melissa says, I'm team Vendu, switched from List Perfectly. I don't know if you feel like saying, but if you want to, just another opinion, let us know why you think, um, why you made the switch. I'm a Vendu girl myself. Oh, look, this is Barbara Babash's closet. Barbara Babash on Poshmark, and here's her eBay. Um, Barbara Babash is just such a wise friend in our community. She's always keeping me like, to do the right rational thing. I always just want to keep all the clothes. And she's like, no, Quimby, sell it. Um, and she was on my live show when we did our holiday party. So I really appreciate her coming on that time and doing a giveaway. She was awesome. It was great to get to know her so much. Designer Duds Junkie. I use offers to likers at the end of the day. It works well for me. I figure if they take the time to like the item, I will offer a discount. Tammy, designer duds junkie is Tammy. You're gonna have to remind me. I love when I, it's like I know people by their usernames from Instagram and YouTube. And then it's like, I get the names. Like I wanna remember the names. So always remind, feel free to remind me and remind us because we're all trying to um, get to know each other better. So I've heard a few different things. If you're a Poshmark seller, just some tips here that you might wanna make note of. In the chat, you've heard a lot of people say they send out their offers on Thursday. And if you're wondering why, um, what I've heard is that a lot of people get paid on Thursday or their check posts on Thursday or Friday. So it's a great day to send offers. But Tammy just gave us something interesting, which is she likes to send them in the evening. Um, so, you know, try these things out in your own business and see what works. Um, Birdie is asking Leslie if she has a video on managed payments. I'm a little scared. Nothing to be scared of. Nothing really changes for you. Just set up an account. Instead of your money going into PayPal, it goes into your bank account, which in a way is better because PayPal is not a bank. PayPal is not as safe. Um, and there are some benefits to manage payment. People can pay however they want. Um, so I think it's actually a pretty good thing, but nothing really changes that you have to worry about. They just put you in the program. But I don't know if someone has a video on that. Leslie says, between List Perfectly and Manage Payments, I'm convinced to stay on eBay. I'm so glad to hear it, Leslie, because Leslie, when I met her, was like Team Poshmark. She'd been on eBay. She made a lot of money there. But then she switched over and was just doing Poshmark. And now she's going back to the Bay, back to eBay. That's the that's the amazing thing, you guys. You you always get to, you get to renegotiate all the time. In every aspect of life, in your relationships, with your spouse, with your kids, you get to come back to the table anytime and say, hmm, I've been thinking about it. Maybe I do want to resell on eBay. Maybe I did agree to this thing and now I've changed my mind. You get to do that. You, at any time, you get to come back to the table with any decision you've made and say, hey, that decision was working for me at that time in my life, but this is what I need now. It's the amazing thing, especially in your reselling business, about being an adult, being self-employed, running your own business. You get to decide. You get to say, hmm, hey, I was using this perfectly. Now I'm Vendu. Hey, I'm going to take a break from offers to likers on Poshmark. Hey, I'm not even. You get to make all these educated, informed decisions for yourself. You're in charge. There's tons of great information out there to help you make decisions. But ultimately, it's totally up to you. That's what's amazing. Um, oh, this is Birdie about the managed payments again. I'll go fill it out. Don't sweat it. Message me if you have any questions on Instagram, but there's not really anything. Reseller Wendy says, full price sales are awesome. Sold a Harley leather vest full price this week for 99 bucks. That's awesome. What'd you pay for it? And where'd you get it? Harley Davidson is one of those brands so I've been selling 10 years. I've been a thrifter my whole life. And you see different brands come and go. You see different trends, styles, of course. And a lot of the brands that were like hot when I first started, like, oh my God, I can't, you were dying to find like territory ahead. And now I couldn't sell that to save my life. Not really. Um, Harley Davidson is one of those ones that's like, I don't think I've ever seen a dip. It's just always consistently been a seller. Now, there are some things that sell better in the brand Harley Davidson than others. But it's like, that's been like a consistent, a consistent seller for me. That's what I appreciate, too, about being someone who sells a lot of the mature women's brands. That's why the Jomar wholesale box that I got, mature women's brands, is like my dream box because one, it's pre-owned and I still want to do as much pre-owned as I can as a reseller, but it's all those brands that I know and love. Chico's, Talbot's, um, 
all that stuff. J. Jill. I got some way better brands in this box. I'm like total designers like Hugo Boss. Thank you very much. But um, those brands don't really like those brands haven't changed a lot for me either. But you have to pay attention as a reseller to brands because sometimes a brand's hot for a while and then it's not. So if you're on there more than a year, check it out. All right, friends, let's go. Let's see what else is going on. Then we're going to start wrapping up because I'm usually on an hour. But since there have been 50 friends here just hanging and everyone's chatting, I've been on here a little bit longer. Let's see what my friend Roxy has to say. I love my friend Roxy. I saw a comment and guess what? It slipped right out from under the chat. Look at MMM. Want to start, want to get started on Poshmark as a business selling my own clothes. Do I have to pay? Oh, you're a super newbie. Welcome, welcome. Uh, no, on Poshmark, you do not have to pay. When your item sells, you pay 20%, which is kind of high, but you don't have to pay. Like eBay, it balances out. It's only 10%, but I buy a store. So, so you know, it all rounds out. Holly, I hope you're doing well, Holly. Oh, here we go. Antique Boutique. Thank you, James, for answering that question for a new reseller. I appreciate that. I love managed payments, says Heidi. So do I. And Babette says, I'm joining man man Managed Payments tomorrow. I've been putting it off. I hope it's easy. See, I, I totally get that because as human beings, we kind of instinctively, most of us don't like change. We're like, hey, I was in my groove. I knew P PayPal. I knew how it worked. But Managed Payments, I, I notice no difference. The only difference is it goes into my a checking account that I set up for reselling rather than PayPal, which in a way is kind of better. And, and eBay has right there... You can look at absolutely every charge. I mean, I love it. I don't have any, I haven't had one blip. And Heidi says, as a top rated plus seller, my fees are now under 12%. Ba Boom! I love eBay. You guys know I do. I have a whole series. I have a no, whole series on total newbie beginner eBay videos. Check it out. Zoe says, ha, huh, you really do pay on Postmark, just not up front. Absolutely. And maybe that works out for a lot of people, but 20%. Yikes. Like I sold a pair of jeans in my Jomar box for 150 bucks. 20%. That is a that is a big percent. No, wait. One pair I sold on eBay for 150. Poshmark, it was 105. And I'm like, I have to give you guys 20 bucks? That hurt. I mean, that <laughs> I love you, Poshmark. Deborah says. I'm about to get on the steam train, loving my new Salav steamer. I have that linked in my description section. I have all the tools that I use in my reselling business linked in the description. So like the best lint remover, the best steamer, the best suede cleaner, it's all down there. And I love it. I love having it. There we go. Roxy says, Quemby, I sold three items on eBay this week. Ah, ah, I love that. That makes me so happy. Let me just say, and, and Roxy will share this with you too. She was someone who kind of was a Poshmark seller, wanted to get on eBay, a little nervous because she doesn't know how to do it. Of course you would be. And she's just like rocking it. She's jumping in. She's educating herself and she's selling things. James says, I could use the leather chaps for Friday and Saturday nights. <laughs> My dog thinks I look good in chaps. Oh, James, you're so loved in this community. You're so funny. Okay, friends, I'm going to finish this up because this is getting crazy in here. Oh, James says, I still have inventory boxes. If anyone's interested, hit up James. You can find him on Instagram too. Um, and wait, Deborah had a milestone. Deborah says, milestone celebration. I finally reached 1,000 feedback on my eBay store. That's, that's awesome. I only have like 2,200 or something, and I've been on there like 10 years. That's awesome. Okay, friends, I'm going to let you guys go because we've been on here for a while. And that means I won't see you until Friday. That stinks. But who knows? Maybe I'll be on another live. I think I'm on Leslie's next week. I'll be here Friday. And who knows? Every once in a while, I do something else. So I'm so glad to spend Friday with you. It was so fun. Such good conversation. Come and find me on Instagram at the Grateful Queen on Instagram. Make sure you like the video when you close it off. And make sure you're subscribed. And I'll see you soon, friends. Night.